Jane Caesar. there are other things in Galway, all Ireland for that matter, that you don't find anywhere else. Clericones and banshees, the little folk, and of course the leprechaun himself. Blarney and the Blarney Stone itself. So many things that are hard to credit that the only way is to make a trip there for yourselves, as we are now going to do. <laughs> Oh, mother of heaven, he's at it again, Mary. Uncle Terrence? Who else? Rattling his portrait against the chimney stones and wailing like the banshee he is. Oh. Well, Sean, you know what he's after. Eh? Turn the picture face to the wall and give the poor man the chance to dress himself in privacy. Eh, all right, Mary. Oh, but, but where would he want to be off to today? There's no wake or wedding or holy day to celebrate. But if he's taken advantage of the leprechaun's promise, there's something special in the wind. Now, you being the man, take a wee peep there and see if he's gone. <laughs> he's gone. The canvas is bare as a turnip. Ah, then mark my word, Sean Daly. We're in for some excitement in Clenford. I wonder what will be this time. <laughs> mystery drama, The Wakeful Ghost, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Paul Hecht. <laughs> Brian Mackin finished his last year of med school and found himself with a thousand dollars left of his inheritance and two weeks before he began his internship. He was weary from the long struggle for his medical degree because in spite of scholarships, he had to work outside to raise money for the six years of study. Both his parents were dead. So far as he knew, he was alone in the world, but his background was Irish and he had some vague memory that an aunt and uncle were living still in the old country. So he decided to spend the two weeks on a vacation, which was to change his whole life. Nobody's going to believe this, but it's exactly what happened to me in Ireland. After roaming around a few days in Dublin, I took a train for Ballinasloe in Galway, to the west, the only clue I had to my uncle and aunt was an old postcard with that postmark and their names, Sean and Mary Daly, which is sort of equivalent to John and Mary Smith. I didn't have much hope of finding them, but it was a joy just to have nothing to do with my last three days playing detective. No one was more surprised than I when a ruddy-faced little gentleman walked up to me at the station. Sure, now, I couldn't be mistaken, but just for the politeness of the thing and observing the formalities as to her, but you wouldn't be Brian Macken from America. Uh, well, yes, that, that's exactly who I would be. And now you're maybe wondering who I am. Uh, well, yes, I am. I am indeed. <laughs> sure. I'm your great-uncle Terence on your mother's side, once or twice removed, for I was born on the wrong side of the blanket, they say. <laughs> oh, I, I, I don't know myself, nor care, for sure. In my own opinion, I was a changeling, which accounts for my close association with, with the... Uh, well, well, that, that's of no matter for the moment. Terence Kruskin is the name. Terence Kinsella Clonmay Kruskin. But your Uncle Terence will serve. Tis the way most people know me. Well, I, 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 I'm still puzzled. Um, how did you know me? I've a little cart and a pony waiting. Oh. And if we want to get to your aunt and uncle's before dark, I'm thinking we'd best get along and I tell you all on the way. Uh, I, 
I, I don't mean to be rude, sir, but I still would like to know how you knew I was coming here today. I only made up my mind on the spur of the moment this morning. Ah, now that's where you're wrong, do you see? Well, what do you mean? Well, while we're riding along, would you like a little dash of potheen to warm the cockles of your heart? <laughs> Is that the Irish whiskey you make out of bog water that's about 180 proof? Uh -huh, the same? Uh, no, thanks. No, that's the stuff I had last night in Dublin that knocked me out like a Mickey. I'm still not over it. <laughs> well, now then, to answer your question. Yeah. How I knew to expect you. Uh -huh. Do you remember the little chap in the green bowler you met at the snook last night? Oh, yeah, I remember him. He, he introduced me to this nectar. <laughs> well, now, McDrush is a friend of mine. Yeah, well, that's not what he said last night. That he wasn't a friend? Uh, no, I mean that that wasn't his name. Oh, he probably called himself Michael Mahan or some such. Yeah, that's right. Sure, that's what he uses as, as a cover when he's out and about the town. <laughs> what is he, a, a secret agent, uh, IRA or something? Not him. He's all peace and goodwill. He's a leprechaun. A leprechaun? That's right. Oh, 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 God, come on, Uncle Terence. Stop pulling my leg. Michael Mahan was no leprechaun. Did he have a little green bowler? Well, I don't know if you could call it green. It, it was green. old. Green. And did he have pointy little ears just under his hat rim at the top, like? Well, as a matter of fact, medically, I was interested because the auricular cartilage was strangely shaped. The, the what was what? At the top of his ears. Ah, there, 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 there. You see, you see? There's your answer. Enough to convince an American. Anyway, your friend the leprechaun sent me a message in a way that we have. And that's well, how I... This must be the greatest put-on of all time. You're not going to tell me you're a leprechaun, too. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I'm more of a banshee, you might call me, but with special privileges. Oh, yes, quite special. Uh, but that can wait. Oh, Mariner. Oh, oh. oh, is this where my aunt and uncle live? It is. Sean and Mary Daly? That's who they are. Are they expecting me? Lord bless you, no, but you'll be welcome, son, as welcome as the flowers in May. <laughs> Here, take your bags and, and jump on down. Aren't you coming in with me to introduce me? Well, sure, you're a nice, well-mannered lad, and you'll manage by yourself. But it's time enough to put Maureen and the cat and myself away till any of us is needed. God hold you in his pocket till we meet again. We are going to, aren't we? Oh, yes, indeed. I don't know how to be arranged, but I have plans for you and the future of more than one. At the moment he was calling it back to me, the twilight was upon us. It must have been some trick of the rising evening mist, but I swear, before he reached the corner of the building, Uncle Terence, the old-fashioned cart, and Maureen, who pulled it, seemed to disappear in the gathering gloom. Good evening to you, young gentleman. Uh, excuse me, uh, are you by any chance Mrs. Sean Daly? I am that. Uh, uh, did you have a brother who emigrated to America called Thomas Mackin? I did. And you're from America? Yeah. <gasps> You couldn't be. <laughs> it's just Brian, you right. are. Brian Larkin, whose mother was Margaret Denise. That's me. Hi, Aunt Mary. Oh, Brian. Oh, me darling boy, me darling boy. Oh, forget me. Come, come in. <laughs> Sean, Sean, will you look who's here? It's Tommy's son and Margaret's. This is your Uncle Sean. <laughs> Well, it is a pleasure to meet you. Do, oh, sit down, sit down. Sean, take the boy's bag. Yes, yes. How I did you said. ever find us? Oh, it's been years since we lost track. Sean and me had to move so sudden like, and our letters seem to go astray. Now uh, tell me about Tom and Margaret. Well, uh, uh, mother and dad both died suddenly oh. within a month of each other. I, well, I, I've been so busy burying myself in schoolwork, I didn't... Uh, well, I, I let everything else oh, go. Oh, you poor darling. Oh, if I'd known. Oh, you must tell us yeah. all about uh, it. Can I get you a wee nip to settle you? Oh, no, 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 thanks. I'm learning to be careful of Irish nips. Well, then I'll get you something to eat. Now, you'll stay the night with us in a few days? Sure, I, I, I've got till the weekend before I have to catch my plane home. Oh. Anyway, I, I'll wait to have dinner with all of you. Aunt Mary, Uncle Sean, and Uncle Terence. Yes, uh, Uncle who? Uncle Terence. Uh, he met me at the station, brought me here. I'd never have found you without him. He just went to put the horse and cart away. Hmm. A little mare. 
With one black eye and one white? Yeah, that's Maureen. And did you expect to meet him at the station? No, no, he absolutely floored me. I mean, the only reason I came to Ballinaslow was because I found an old card from you to Mother with a postmark. Uh... I was just taking a wild stab in the dark that someone might know about you or where you live. I wanted to... Well, I, I mean, as far as I know, you are my only living relative. Oh, we are, darling, we are. Well, I didn't know about Uncle Terrence and, well... And what, Brian? You can be free with us. Well, I, I, I don't know what to say. He talked about uh, leprechauns and banshees, you know, that sort of thing. Well, I might have thought he was a little, uh, uh, I guess you'd say, touched, except for... Well, I shouldn't talk this way. I loved him. He was he was fun and amusing and full of a wonderful zest for life, but sort of scary, too. Is he the same at home here? Oh, he can be all of those, though we don't see much of it anymore. Uncle Terrence is a great problem oh, for us. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Nothing I, to uh, do with you. you know, I, I hope you won't tell him some of the things I just said or, or, or intimated. Uh, when he comes in for dinner, I mean. Hey, hey, he, uh... He won't be here for dinner. Oh, oh! I thought he lived here. Well, uh, so he does in a, in a sort of way. I think it's time that we told the boy the truth, Sean, as best we can. Ah, uh, yes. Well, you, uh, you had a good long look at Uncle Terrence. He, uh, he wouldn't forget it. Oh no, no, never. Look behind the picture and make sure. Yes. Yes, he's back again. Now, come here. You see this portrait, Brian? Now, would that, uh, would that be Uncle Terrence? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's him. That's him to the life. You're not exactly. The gentleman you are looking at has been dead these 35 years. What? The but... only problem is that, uh, he won't stay decently in his grave. <laughs> So Brian Mackin has come all the way to Ireland to find a real uncle and aunt. And in addition, a quite unreal uncle. A man who appears to be able to rise from the grave full-bodied by the mere device of having his portrait turned to the wall. No wonder Brian is convinced that it's all illusionary. A pipe dream programmed by that potent potine. And yet... This is only the beginning. I'll be back shortly with Act Two. Back again to our world of fantasy and a young American trapped in a web of superstition, illusion, or perhaps just the spell the Emerald Island can weave so easily about any visitor to its shores. Still, whatever doubts and fears he may have taken to bed with him, they are all dispelled by a glorious sunrise that wakes him up with cock crow. My window faced to the east, with the sun streaming in and striking shafts of golden light from a blue river a few miles away. I climbed out of the host of warm blankets and quilt that covered my bed. The room was cold enough for me to seek the sun's warmth directly. And it was there, at the window, I first saw Sheila. She was not a small girl. She was tall and sturdy. But she walked as though each footfall was no heavier than a feather landing on the ground. She had long brown hair and purple eyes. With a wide mouth that, well, once I saw it break in a smile, made me make up my mind this was going to be my gal. Since she was approaching the house carrying a basket, I don't suppose I ever dressed faster in my life to get down in time not to miss meeting her. Good morning, Brian. And did you sleep well? Oh, yes. The best sleep I've had since I can remember. Ah, uh, sure. It was a short enough one, and you so tired. Well, that cock was crowing, and... Ah, that old rooster. <laughs> he's no fake. Small use he is to hens anymore. His best days being over. Never a chick in the last two years. There's not over four or five layers we have left. So, Sheila here and me, we have a bargain. <laughs> oh, you'll not have met Sheila O'Shaughnessy from the next farm over. Sheila, 
This is my nephew, all the way from the United States of America. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, Mr... Uh, uh, Matt Mackin. Uh, uh, Brian Mackin. Oh, it's a good West Country name. Mr. Mackin. Yeah, well, my grandfather came from here. Uh, from Galway, I mean. <laughs> they say he was quite a bully boy. Aye. Well, those days are past, praise be. Still, the way things are, we were better off with the shillelagh than the gun. Oh, well, I, I couldn't agree with you more... Anyone who plans to be a doctor... Is that what you're away to be? Well, I well, I already am. I, I mean, I've graduated and had my license. Now I have to intern and be a hospital resident for a few years till I start out on my own. Oh, that's grand. I have a great admiration for doctors. Now, now, then, this will have to hold or the bread will burn up on us. And I want you to get it home with a little heat left in us. <laughs> this is Mrs. Daly's bargain with me. I bring her a basket of eggs... And she bakes the most delicious bread this side of heaven. Oh, oh, oh. Ah, here, no. Here's the basket. Keep the towel tucked in good and tight, man. Never fear. Uh, that's that's a heavy basket. Uh, why don't I carry it for you to your house? I was going to give you your breakfast. Yeah, well, uh, it'll wait. I always like a little exercise before I eat. Ah, well. You'll be after getting that, all right. It's a good mile and a half to Sheila's place, oh. and a road like a switchback all the way. Oh, the basket is nothing. It's light as a feather. No, I, I really would like a walk, if, if, if you don't object. I don't object. I've a curious turn of mind, and I'd like to hear all about America. Oh, what I'd really like you to be able to do is to show it to you, but <clears throat> why don't you show me Ireland first? There. Yeah. Was that Sheila O'Shaughnessy then? The same. Oh, now, damn it. Well, well why, why didn't she wait long enough for me to get down and, and get my little morning pack on the cheek, huh? <laughs> sure she has little interest in an old gaffer like you. <laughs> but you should have seen her reaction to Brian and his to her. Well, well will you look at the two of them? She's over shoulder high to him. Oh, what a fine couple they'd make. Uh, don't I know it. And don't I know just as well I should never have let the boy go off with even a pinch of hope in his heart. No, and she can't ever be for him. And is it really true that in Chicago they have a building that's 96 whole stories high in the air? Oh, yes, yeah, that's true enough. It's so damn high that half the time the people on the top floors can't tell what to wear when they go out. Well, how is that? Well, you see, it's air-conditioned. And when the cloud cover is low, they can't see down to the street, so they don't know if it's raining or snowing or cold or hot or what. <laughs> Will you just imagine that now? Living above the clouds. It'd be a sort of fairyland. Well, nothing like the one you live in here. R right on the ground. Oh, sure. Air is oh. lovely. But there are other lovely places in the world I'd want to see. Hey, you know a lot about America anyway. Well, I watch the telly, you know. And I read a lot. And I... Oh, here. <laughs> it's winded you are. Oh, slow down a bit. Oh, this is damn hills. <laughs> Up and down like a roller coaster. That's what Mrs. Daly meant by a switchback. I'm surprised to find myself so out of condition. Will you be staying with the Dalys for a while? On one condition. What's that? That you'll take another walk with me? Tomorrow's Saturday. We, we could take a picnic lunch along and uh, climb that mountain over there. Oh, I'm afraid I couldn't do that. You have another date? No, it's not that. It's... Oh, you see, my dad is dead. and It's just my mother and me, and, and she's half crippled with rheumatism. Oh. I couldn't be leaving her all alone all that time. And, and then... There's the farm chores to be well, done. Well, I could, I could come over and, and help you get those out of the way. Ah, uh, Dr. Mackin. Uh, Brian. Well, it's a bit soon in all, but if you want, Brian. Oh, it's just no good. It's not the way it should be. You, you don't want to go with me. Is that it, Sheila? Sheila. I do want to, Brian, I do. Oh, well, then Come. It'd be my only chance now. I'll meet you. Here, by this bridge we're about to cross. And before dawn tomorrow, so we'll not be seen. We'll spend a whole long, lovely day together. 
There's no one the wiser. But, but can I tell Uncle Sean and Aunt Mary? Well, don't tell anyone. It's our secret. But the picnic... I'll take care of that. Now, you leave me here. Till tomorrow, at say, 4.30. Well, whatever you say. Sheila... I know. So do I. God help the both of us. He was gone in a second with that light, loping stride that covered ground almost as fast as a man running. I watched her as long as I could, away down that dusty, twisting, hilly road, appearing and disappearing, till at last she was out of sight, but not out of mind. Never out of mind, Sheila. Just her name was a song of love. I walked back on the air. But fortunately, as it turned out, as I came back in the house, the first thing my eye fell on was the portrait of Uncle Terence. And for the moment, Sheila was out of my mind. Oh, no, 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 thanks. I, I Really, I couldn't eat another thing. Now, the only thing I'm hungry for now is information. About Sheila, is that you mean? Uh, Sheila? Uh, no, no, I... I'd rather find out about her directly. Uh, Brian, I, uh, uh... About Sheila. Maybe I ought to tell you something. Uh, no, Uncle... I'd, I'd, I'd rather, for the moment, stick to Uncle Terrence. Hmm? Now, you said he's been dead for nearly 35 years. Oh, yeah, that's two years almost to the day before that portrait was painted. He died in 1940. Now, are you sure of that? Oh, sure, I know it well. I was just a slip of a girl not married to Sean yet. Hmm. But it was the biggest wake this part of Galway has ever seen. Ah, oh, it is a pity he couldn't have enjoyed it for himself. He always was the life and soul of them with his stories and all. Ah, oh, yes, he does dearly love a wake just as much as a wedding. Mm -hmm. I did, uh, Sean. Did what? Uh, did love a wake. But now, look, I saw him last night. I talked to him. He brought me here. Now, now, lad, you'll have to remember you had a wee drop taken... And fourteen can scramble a man's brain. I can't believe that the dri uh, How did Uncle Terence die? A hero at Dunkirk. Dunkirk? Ah, he was in the First World War, you know, in the Navy. And nothing would do, but he had to be in the last big one, too. But a man 60 years old, they wouldn't take him. No. So he joined up with the Home Guard. When the retreat at Dunkirk came, with his Navy experience, he was taking a boat back and forth the whole three days. And when he saw that it would be his last trip, he found one of the fighting boys to take his ship back and gave up his own place to stay behind with a machine gun. The last boat out, just ahead of the Jerry's, brought him back. Uh... Oh, they say he had more lead in him than salt in a full salt cellar. But his finger was still wrapped around the trigger of his gun. It was a sad wake, that, mm. Uncle Terence's. Mm. The only sad one I'd ever been to. Although none of them are the same without him to keep the jokes flying. <laughs> Even Michael Mahan had naught but sorrow in him. Him who always had a twinkle in his eye. I remember him just standing in front of the portrait there. Just standing. Not even drinking from his glass. <clears throat> and do you remember what he said? It was this, it was this. He says, uh, a brass of a boy, Terence, me bucko. And you should have lived a hundred years. Well, don't you worry. We'll see you do. I always wondered what he meant by that. Well, now, look, don't you see? If he was McDrewish, I mean, if Mahan was a real leprechaun... Now, touch, boy. Don't let our Irish fancies run off with you. Sure, all he meant was he wouldn't be soon forgotten. Well, now, I, uh, <clears throat> I have to be off to work, and Mary has things to do, and, uh, and Brian. Yeah. Don't dwell on Uncle Terence. Uh, find some other thoughts to fill your head. Yes, I... I have. <laughs> I have. <laughs> That's the great fog to the north. Don't ever go near there, Brian. Why not, Sheila? Once the peat catches you, you'll never get free. And they say it'll swallow a man in less than a minute. To 
the southwest are the rest of the Schleivachti Mountains, the ones we're in now. And away down there, to the southeast, is the River Shannon. What's the matter? Are you cold? How could I be cold with your arm about me? Bold. <laughs> That's what I am. Bold. Because you love me. And how could you be bashful with a man who loves you now, tomorrow, and forever? <laughs> I, I just can't believe my luck. Don't. Don't what? Ah, oh, Brian Boyne. Don't say anything else. It's all been madness from the start. Love from the start. For us, the same thing. I should never have allowed you to. But I wanted. I loved. And sure, God can't punish me too deep for just one day of all I've dreamed. Kiss me. We've got to go. It's twilight already. Oh, just a little longer. And what about tomorrow? We have no tomorrows. Just kiss me. <sighs> Goodbye, my love. Goodbye, Brian. Goodbye. Again, she was gone from me on the wind, gliding and leaping down the mountain, picnic basket in hand, as sure-footed and graceful as a mountain goat. Sheila! Sheila! Wait! She didn't stop to look back, and I plunged down after her, recklessly and clumsily as a boar. I hadn't gone 50 yards before I caught my foot on some trailing root, falling heavily and knocking myself stone cold for a moment. By the time I came to, she was gone from sight. And in the gathering darkness, limping heavily, it was all I could do to find my way back to the daily farm. <laughs> And there you are. Sure, we thought you might be lost in the dark. Yeah, I'm lost in the dark, all right, Aunt Mary. Now, look, I, I don't know if it's another of your Irish fantasies or what. Oh, where have you been all day, lad? Oh, and you're hurt. Yeah. Sean, uh, come in here. Oh, well, I'm, I'm coming, Mary. Wait. Wait, well, you sound as though someone put the fear of God in you. What, yes. What's happened at all? It's Brian. He's hurt. What? And more than physically, I'm thinking... Were you with Sheila O'Shaughnessy this day? Yes, I was. And I love her. And I know she loves me. Oh. But she's told me goodbye. Why? I mean, am I crazy? Is she just another figment of my imagination? Oh, you see, Sean. I told you we should have told the boy the truth. Yeah, well, well, better late than never. Uh, Sheila is engaged to be married to Malachi Malloy. Well, is that all? Huh? Well, then all she has to do is break no, it. No, no, she has a marriage contract. Well, surely that has no real legal standing. Today, no. Except, uh, well, you see, a few years ago, uh, Sheila's father had a heart attack. He got into financial difficulties, and the only way out was through Malloy, the loan shark. He lent him the money in exchange for his daughter when she became 21. Well, sure, Joe thought he could have things straightened out before then, but... But he suddenly had a second attack and died. Yeah, well, I'll pay the money back. Have you got it? Well, no, not right now, but as soon as... Oh, I... no good for Malachi Malloy. Besides, you make so much as one move at Sheila, and in this county, he'd have his woolly boys throw you in a sack and bury you in the peat bog. And the, uh, the wedding is day after tomorrow. Now, 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 look, just wait a minute. I mean, this is crazy. This is the 20th century. I'm an American citizen. I'm... Must be something I can do. What the devil is that? Oh, it's Uncle Terence. He what? wants out again. The Lord knows what he'll stir up this time. But there's no way to stop the man. So, here we are back again about where we started. Where are we? But what can Uncle Terence do or undo? Even supposing that's what he's after. Still, why couldn't it be? Since he's now well established as a denizen of the afterworld, I'll return shortly with Act Three. It was.
was W.S. Gilbert, probably the finest lyricist of all time, who wrote of John Wellington Wells that he was a dealer in magic and spells, in blessings and curses, and ever-filled purses, in prophecies, witches, and knells. I mention him only because it brings us back to our story of magic, fantasy, and, so far, pleasant sorcery. But will it remain that way as Uncle Terence's picture rocks on the wall and once again we hear the eldritch scream of the banshee wail? I'll turn the picture to the wall. But if he's going to appear, it will only be to the one who turns the picture. I think this time we'd better let it be Brian. Now look, I'm not going to ask any questions anymore. Just leave me alone. Right, I'll, I'll turn the picture. But Brian... Come away, Mary. We're out of this entirely. All right, Uncle Terrence, or whoever you are, I am about to turn the picture. And all I say is, you get me, Sheila... Or show me how to get her. And I, don't, I don't care what the price is, short of my immortal soul, and I'll pay that gladly. Uh, here you go. Ah, who wants your immortal soul? Where are you? Turn around. You have eyes, haven't you? Sitting right here in the fireplace, Nook. Oh. Uh, what are you? Fact or fiction? Oh, why now, in a manner of speaking, I'd say somewhere in between. Well, does it make any sense to talk to you? All the sense in the world. Even suppose I believed, uh, if you're a banshee. Now, what's the matter with a banshee? Well, it's evil, isn't it? Ah, the abysmal ignorance of the word. A banshee, young man, is a domestic spirit devoted to the care of its own particular family. Oh, well, are you going to help Sheila and me? Oh, sure, I'm going to do my best, but I'm not infallible. We'll have to be quick and nimble as the devil on this one. Well, why can't I just go to this Malachy Malloy and straighten it out, man oh, to man? Oh, 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 oh. To begin with, did you ever see him? No. Oh, he's formidable, lad. No doubt of that. The man is a giant, and he's made of steel. Well, look, whose side are you on? Mine or his? Easy, lad, easy. Am I not the Banshee, and aren't you one of the family? Besides, he's a black Irisher, if there ever was one. But you've got to take thought on this. If you're to have the chance I brought you here for in the first place. You brought me here? Well, sure, you didn't think as an American you'd have enough sense to get here and pick the right Irish girl for yourself. Now, let me go on back up to my frame and get everything shipshape and squared away. I'll see you on the morrow. And, psst, watch your step. <laughs> grateful. I didn't want to talk about Sheila or her intended husband any more that night. I hoped to sleep, but I tossed and turned till morning and then made the mistake of stepping outside the house for a breath of air. Coming down the road towards me was a great mountain of a man, all covered with black hair wherever his clothes didn't conceal it. The one thing his clothes could not conceal were the bulging muscles that strained at every seam. He was a good five inches taller than I was and 30 pounds heavier. And Would you be the American, Brian Matthews? Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that, that's my name. I'm Malachi Malloy. Well, I kind of guessed that. I'm of the understanding that you took my intended bride up the mountain yesterday. Well, she was kind enough to take me up for a picnic and show me the countryside. A picnic, was it? And the grass stains all over her dress? I should have brought a whip. But instead, I'm going to beat you with my bare hands. Malachi, Malachi, don't. Now you stay out of this, Sheila. What's going on, Brian? Oh, it's just just a little something between me and Mr. Malloy. Oh, the Lord be praised. Keep them apart and kill him. Oh. Don't touch him, Malachi. Now you stay back, woman, or I'll kill him. So put your hands up, back and... Defends the right. He was out for breakfast that morning. Now, I'm not exactly a <laughs> patsy, and I, I usually can take care of it myself in a, in a fight. But this was a willy pad against a Marciano. He just made hamburger of me until he stopped and turned with me lying at his feet. Have you learned a lesson as well as him, Sheila girl? If you haven't, I'll, 
I'll beat him to death. I'll make sure he never rises again. Oh, in sweet Mary's name, leave him be, Malachy. I'll marry no one but you if you'll just leave him be. All right, so be it. Now get out of this country tonight, Martin. Or I'll wring your neck like a chicken's. Oh. Who's that? Open the window and let me in. Quick, now, I'm fading in the daylight. Uncle Terrence, it's a picture. Now watch out for it. Let, let, let me in there. And close those curtains before I disappear entirely. There, now, sure, that's better, 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 that is. What are you? You're just a portrait. And how could you get to the second floor window? Shh, but warning. The only trouble I ever found with a girl is they talk too much. The answer to it all is, I'm a banshee, and I look out for my own. Brian is one of them. Oh, how is he? Was he sore hurt? Oh, a few bruises, and maybe he lost a tooth or cracked a rib. But what's that to a broken heart? You should know. Am I right? If you mean the way I feel. I was getting ready to tie a sack of potatoes around my neck, throw myself in the Shannon. Well, now, that'd be a whole lot ahead. Now, I have a better idea. How would you like to meet Brian at Tronmelly's Gate on the way into the Great Bog tonight at midnight? I can't. I can't do it. I owe my father his debts. And besides, Malachy would kill him. Ah, all right, all right. Spare me all the melodramatics. What I mean is, how would you like to convince that hickory-headed, lame brain Malachy that's what you plan to do? Why? Now, what is a banshee for? Will you let me take care of the arrangements from then on? I will, Uncle Terence. I will. And uh, if I'm successful, will you let me give you away when you marry Brian? How could a banshee do that? Oh, you let me handle that, too. Just say yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Is that the banshee himself? Is it the leprechaun? God save you, McGrush. God save you, Terence Scripkeen. Come here, Brian. Get us a firefly there so we can see what we're at. There, now. That's better. <laughs> do you see what Malachi did to the lad? Oh, the word right, Brian. Yeah, well, I, I, I took a good beating, but now I'll live. It's, uh, it's nice to see you again, Mr. Mahan. Yeah, he said, no, no, no. No, we all know what to do. Yeah, I, I just show myself in the moonlight with you in that cape and hood, and, and, and then... And then McGoosh will dematerialize you back to the farm. Right. And Malachi will have no one to chase but me, <laughs> thinking I'm here. I'll tell you all the rest later. <laughs> you, uh, you have the shoes, McGoosh. Uh, just the one. You know, we leprechauns never make but one magic shoe. Well, 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 no matter. I can hop like a toad long enough until he's well in the bog. <laughs> psst, psst. Now, tis midnight. Here he comes. Send Brian home, Rush. And give me the shoe. And off I go. Sheila. Sheila, I warn you. Wait for me. Eh. So you tried to slip away with your life and love, eh? But you won't get away from me so easy. Eh? Where, where are you leading me? Well, you put it in the bog. I'm caught. I, I'm sinking. Sheila! Sheila, help me. I'm, I'm sinking in the bog. Now come back. Come back. Come back! Ah! Ah, now there's a darling girl. You wouldn't let me go down to a dark, murky death. You that knows every path in it. Well, that's not you. It's a... That can't be. The bogles have a halt on me. It's Terence Christine. And who's that wee man beside you? Oh, little friend. One of the wee green men. Here we are, your nemesis or your saviors. Oh. And which would you want us to be? Oh, Lord alive. Save me. 
I'm up to my waist already. That's no problem. Uh, a little piece of paper. Uh, and since it's hard to read in the moonlight, I'll give you the gist, uh, as they say. I, Malachi Moy, hereby uh, legally and completely accept the fact that all debts or claims against Thomas O'Shaughnessy uh, are revoked and considered null and void. This is blackmail. So was what you did to my friend. And uh, the bog is even uh, blacker and you're sinking even deeper. All right, all right, I'll sign, I'll sign. Well, that, uh, there's a wee bit more. What, what? I also cancelled the marriage contract between myself and Sheila O'Shaughnessy. Honesty, uh, and in consequence of my breach of promise, uh, I award her the sum of two thousand pounds uh, to see her and her mother started off uh, in a new country. Uh, in exchange, uh, I would accept the farm uh, now mortgaged to me, and etc. 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 For God's sake, nice and talking. I'm up to my chest already. I'll sign. I'll sign anything. But would you live up to it? Now, there's the reason. Please! You, you, you wouldn't have any idea now of, of attacking young Brian again. No, no! Should, uh, Should we trust him, do you think, McGrush? Sure. He's an Irish, but after all, I get one in trouble enough, and you never have to worry. <laughs> Don't forget to send pictures of a wagon. Oh, goodbye. Sorry I have to leave. I have to get back for my job. Oh, we're sorry, too, but we'll take care of Mother O'Shaughnessy till you're married and have a place to stay. Uh, Well, Mary, all's well that ends well, but who'd have thought it? You said they made a wonderful couple. (laughs) I'll never understand how Malachi suddenly got so generous. I'll never understand why, but I can guess how. What do you mean? Take a look. We're going to have to get a new picture to hang over the fireplace. Oh, now, what's it doing turn to the wall again? What's he up to now? <laughs> it doesn't turn to the wall. Huh? It's just a blank canvas. So what do you mean? Have a look for yourself. Holy mother, it's blank on both sides. Where's Uncle Terence? I have a feeling he's off to America. He always did want to see the United States. Well, we can leave it up to Sheila and Brian to worry about him now. You can believe it or not, but to the best of my knowledge, that's the way it happened. And if there was a lot of magic in it, there's just as much in love. The exact quote doesn't spring to mind for the moment, but the burden of it is that no matter what happens, love will find a way. I'll be back shortly. Brian and Sheila were married a month later in the States. Everyone who was there agreed they were as handsome a couple as you could ask for. But the real hit of the celebration was a shortish, ruddy-faced little gentleman with an Irish accent to go with his Irish face and his Irish wit. It was sad that he died so soon after the wedding, but it was hard to cry for him, remembering all the laughs he brought with him. Our cast included Paul Hecht, Virginia Payne, Jada Rowland, Leon Janney, and Ian Martin. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.
serving the southern tier and northern Pennsylvania. We're your AM stereo station, 24 hours a day. 1410 WELM Elmira, a Robert Funtner Group station. Growing pre-election tensions in South Africa and USAID arriving in Colombia. With Mutual PM, I'm Carrie Moran in Los Angeles. With South Africa's whites-only national elections just two days away, there was another anti-apartheid protest in Cape Town, this time resulting in the arrests of Anglican Archbishop Desmond Tutu and other activists. Reporter Chris Gibbons was asked if Tutu will be charged with any crime. The official response to that question is that the police are still investigating, but in practice the answer is no. The South African government in the days after the coming election will be looking to prove to the outside world that its new leader, Mr. de Klerk, is reform-minded. Archbishop Tutu on trial is not likely to help him get that message across. Today's incident was the latest in a series of pre-election protests that have become increasingly oppressive despite acting President F.W. de Klerk's call today for an end to racial separation in South Africa.